thank you so much for inviting us to be part of this this morning. Um, and it was great to hear the introduction and what you're doing um, today. And, you know, we, we hugely value uh, working with you and have done so over the last four or five years. And, <clears throat> and um, we hope to continue doing so for many years to come. I think um, COVID has certainly slowed us down, um, but, but um, life, as, as you alluded to, is definitely getting back to normal. And I think um, collaborations and partnerships are at the heart of our planning for how, how we move forward with Remembrance and develop it over the next three to five years. Um, as, as we've mentioned, sort of going back, we, we first came into contact with you um, with the centenary in 2018. Um, and as a unit, we only really came into being following a strategic review in 2017. And we have acknowledged that historically we haven't engaged well with or acknowledged those contributions and service of all communities. And part of our remit um, over the last four years and going forward is to really have that ambition and to develop that remembrance engagement, participation and understanding amongst all communities and peoples of the United Kingdom um, and ensure that we have remembrance that is engaging, inclusive and means something to all of us and that we all are all proud to participate in. Um, just moving on to our second slide, um, I think it's very important just to reiterate what remembrance is and that it's a time to acknowledge the service and sacrifice of our armed forces and their families, the contribution of civilian services in support and the uniform service which contribute to national peace and security, and that we've all seen so many examples of over the last two years. Um, we've seen service exemplified in so many different ways, that, um, and, and we honour all of those contributions, but obviously the heart of our remit is, is the armed forces community. The act of remembrance helps us define individual and collective identity. And when we, we sort of task ourselves as champions of remembrance uh, to lead that engagement of remembrance and continue to talk about remembrance, why it's important, um, how we're all engaged in, in remembrance and how we, you know, that there is this need for us to show our thanks to all of those that, that serve and put themselves beyond on our behalf. Um, but we want to ensure that we really see remembrance as a, as a living, as a living thing. It is, it, it was born out of the losses and the tragedies of the First World War. And it, it, it was sort of steeped into the culture of, of our country with the, the losses and experiences of the Second World War. People continue to serve and sacrifice in this country. And, and we need to, as, as we evolve as with our traditions and, and cultural references, we need to find, keep those traditions of remembrance, but also find new touch points and ways of exemplifying um, remembrance that that have a relevance to us as individuals. I'm going to hand over to my colleague Emma now just to talk about the beginning of our journey. Good morning everyone, thank you for having us. Um, so as Catherine said we were established in 2017 and shortly after that the commemorations to um, mark the end of the centenary of the First World War in 2018 really presented us with opportunities to begin to actively engage with communities who hadn't had a formal connection or extensive involvement with remembrance previously. Um, as Catherine has mentioned as well, and as I'm sure will be mentioned throughout the day, COVID has been a barrier to engagement work and face-to-face -face events have been impossible really for, for much of the past two years. But since 2018, we have worked with faith communities directly and through the Interfaith Network, British Future and others. And these collaborative relationships have helped us to continue to promote an inclusive remembrance. Um, so now I think Catherine's going to give some examples on the next slide of, of what we've done since 2018. Um, and, and, and again, um, I think part of this is that we are still we are on a journey and, and we are still learning as we go. We've had some 
organizational changes um, which have been very positive and we've now got a new department called network engagement and our sort of remembrance objectives are tied into um, their objectives and so we're looking at having um, more resource to to build these community ties and also to ensure that because we are a big organization that that they experience and the knowledge when people connect with us is uh, consistent um the round table you touched on it but but the round table that you hosted for us in 2018 was an incredibly um useful and insightful event for helping us to have open conversations and to understand some of the barriers and the challenges that that we we face going forward and ways in which we might um build programs to overcome those barriers and ensure greater inclusiveness and and they helped us to start to build um contacts and and a community that we could talk to and engage with so that we cannot thank you enough um, for that round table and for that ability then to have just ongoing conversations of we're thinking about this does it make sense what are we thinking here and so and those things um, are one of the things later on that we're going to ask um, more of you in in terms of doing because as, as we come out of COVID we are starting to now get towards developing a three to five year plan and program of work. And we really want to make sure that we're getting those insights and inclusivity right um, at at the foundation of building that plan. Um, Some of you uh, were able to come, but in September last year, we were able to formally open the Remembrance Glade at the National Memorial Arboretum. Um, This was a, a space that we commissioned and planted Um, over the last two years and it was a space for people of all faiths and none to reflect and remember and to sort of get people to think about remembrance maybe in a slightly different way Um, and it's a planted space and every every plant in the space has a symbolic connection and meaning to a remembrance so it 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 has all of these different touch points it grows it evolves and it changes through the seasons um but it, it's a constant place that people can go and and connect with remembrance through nature the symbolic forms features and plants um <clears throat> the gilda rose for memory uh, the himalayan birch for rebirth and sweet gum, for example, for family and inner strength. But it was also to inspire people to think about remembrance, how they want to remember. We created uh, learning resources uh, for young people so that they could either design their own remembrance glade or plant it in a space that they would have within their school or local community area. But it's very much about engaging people with remembrance and those touch points. My only disappointment was that, unfortunately, um, by the time we got to Staffordshire, getting uh, plants from across the Commonwealth proved too troublesome because it's just too far north for them to um, really establish. But we did think about it. Um, Just moving on to other events, we've been building up our attendance, uh, other um, remembrance events that are held annually. So the National Muslim Service of Remembrance, um, since its uh, inaugural event in 2018. We work with uh, British Future, the think tank, um, and delivered Remember Together events in Boston and Leicester, where we invited communities to to join us in sharing their stories and reflecting on shared history of service and sacrifice. And we're still in longer term conversations with them about how we can build on those learnings and create events in communities that that can extend across the country. Um, So so that is still, that's an ongoing project at the moment. Um, We were very honoured last year to um, have the support of Lindsay Hoyle and um, the Speaker of the House of Commons. um, And we created a constituency garden of remembrance within the uh, parliamentary estate and all 650 MPs uh, planted a a remembrance stake 
with a tribute from their constituency, um, which was a sort of a, a really important in terms of engaging, again, another community um, on remembrance, why it continues to be important, um, and to get people thinking about how they might want to engage their constituencies with remembrance. We are back there again this year, um, and we are looking at um, talking to them about service and how, how we can engage and tell that story of obviously the role of parliament um, and the role of the armed forces and the importance of service. There are a whole list of other events that um, we will share with you after this. Um, we also had a film that we wanted to show that we're not going to have time for, but again, we will send links to afterwards. Thank you very much for your time. So namaste, good morning. Um, Thank you for, indeed for giving BAPS seminar Sunstar Temple an opportunity to speak about the subject of Remembrance Day, a very important subject, especially in the times that we live today. And we present a view on behalf of the Indian diaspora in, in the UK, uh, particularly keeping in mind my, our experience in, in interfaith work and various things that we have uh, done in, in relation to, um, to working with rural British Legion. So we came in contact with both Catherine and Emma back in 1918. Uh, we had loads and loads of meetings, extremely useful meetings, and two particularly good things that came out of it, loads of good things that came out of it, but two in particular came out of it. One was, as you might all know, uh, distribution of 100,000 poppies made from Khadi material, uh, those imported from India uh, and made by volunteers in the UK. Uh, this was particularly done uh, to, rem to remember the sacrifice of the, of the Indian soldiers. Uh, not an easy work, uh, getting Khadi from India and then getting it uh, uh, made here, but this was done. Um, and I am hoping and praying that this is a continuous effort. Um, and I'm also hoping and praying, as Catherine knows, and I keep on pushing my point, that in the future, there'll be perhaps 1.3 million poppies representing one poppy for each soldier that participated. Uh, the second interesting thing that came out of it was uh, a Remembrance Day evening that took place at the temple in 2018. Uh, we had over a thousand guests uh, that, that, that were witnessing uh, superb um, uh, participations from different communities on the performance representing all strands. We had the Chinese and the West Indians and Africans also participating to a degree uh, in, in the event. Uh, the event was very, very successful. And Lord Ahmed made this particular comment. Uh, Lord Ahmed, as we all know, is the Minister of State for Commonwealth, and he's also the PM's Special Envoy for Freedom of Religion and Belief. And he said that the event was an incredible demonstration of the unity of mankind, unity of remembrance, and appreciation of friendship and ties of kinship. Uh, this reflected the nature of the event uh, and the nature of the inclusivity of the event. You cannot remember such a thing without being fully inclusive. Uh, Swami Yogi Das, who is the head of our UK and European temples and the community centers, he concluded with a hope and a prayer, may the sacrifices of all that we remember, uh, we never forget and may the need for such a sacrifice never arise again. We hope and we pray. The third achievement has been the creation of a website, India 1914, where the sacrifice of Indian soldiers is well documented. And this site tends to be, or intends to be, a signpost uh, for various information and material available on this very necessary subject. We continue to work closely with the National Army Museum, uh, who remain very committed to improving the presentation of the museum. They would like to see more and more people from different faiths to attend the museum. And they intend to be more and more inclusive and accurate on their presentation about all the nationalities. In the multicultural UK that we live in today, the need for understanding the sacrifice in a very non-colonial language and presentation is essential. I don't quite think we've got to do that. The necessity of making the school children fully aware of the important fact that the freedom they so much enjoy today was as a direct result of sacrifice of people of many, many nations and many, many backgrounds. 
And the debt we owe to them should not and cannot be forgotten. Hence, this event is so important to remember that we are one planet, one earth, and one race, the human race. I therefore hope and pray that all various powers to be will continue to look at our textbooks and history books and ensure that we fully represent the legacy of WW2. And it goes a lot beyond, more beyond than our armed forces with respect. And it reflects the real nature of the sacrifice that everybody made. When the bullets came, it did not know what the person came from. It just hit the person. Sounds uh, so bad, my apologies. Uh, so thank you very much again for this lovely uh, uh, privilege to be able to present um, BAPC's um, involvement in this very worthwhile task. I hope and pray the hard work that uh, Royal British Legion is doing will continue. It's not easy to keep everybody happy, but it's a necessity. So wish you well, namaste, have a good morning. Thank you.